All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for a blood work slash health update. And you guys know I've been very transparent about the health issues I've had following the carnivore diet, what happened afterwards. So that has kind of helped me be really, really honest and somewhat humble in researching and discovering and always being open-minded and, and being really good with you know, pattern recognition and uh, process of elimination in regards to really figuring out and understanding what needs to be done pertaining to health. Uh, basically, five months ago, we discovered that I probably have some type of copper toxicity issue, so that has been the recent focus, and that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. I did not comb my hair this morning. I'm still half asleep, so. Video has to get done, though. So we got a little bit of blood work we're going to look at starting in September of 2023. Our vitamin D was 57 on a scale of 30 to 100, which is pretty good. And this will be important later to make an interesting comparison. Calcium, magnesium, not a regular. Liver enzymes were not out of range. Testosterone was around 400, which is where I'm typically at because, you know, with liver damage, your hormone production is... <laughs> gone, cooked. Uh, ferritin is low at 25 because I donate blood to keep it low. And the main issue we discovered was that my ceruloplasmin was out of range at 38 and my copper was 120, which is slightly out of range. Ceruloplasmin is the main copper carrying protein in the body and it actually requires magnesium to bind to copper. That's why I was like getting magnesium and calcium tests done. And then we also had a micronutrient analysis done showing I was zinc deficient. So that kind of explained why, you know, despite me thinking I had my diet correct and everything, I was still having extreme difficulty sleeping. I was still getting insomnia and then copper toxicity, copper in the bloodstream would definitely cause that. So I started taking a lot of zinc. I felt a bit better, but I still wasn't sleeping. And then in December of 2023, you know, about a few months after that first blood work, I tested my copper again and it went up to 139. Zinc went up a few points and that's telling me that the zinc I was taking was putting more copper into the bloodstream and it can be common in cases of any sort of toxicity where when you start fixing the problem, it actually causes higher blood levels initially and gets worse. And I didn't discover and research ceruloplasmin that it needs magnesium to bind to copper in order to take the copper out of the body until late December. And honestly, like the only reason I don't regret getting that eye surgery is because like a really specific set of circumstances happened when I was in California that caused me to experiment with a high dose of magnesium. And that's ultimately how I figured out to feel better. Uh, if, if I didn't go out there, I don't think I would have ever, I mean, it's hard to say if I would have ever figured that out, but thankfully I did. So ceruloplasmin brings copper to the liver where it is excreted in the bile uh, to be you know, pushed out the digestive system. And again, the ceruloplasmin, the protein enzyme, cannot pick up copper unless you have enough magnesium. So you can take all the zinc you want and you cannot detox copper without magnesium. Uh, and it can really make things worse if you just increase your circulating copper uh, from how you feel perspective. Yeah, so the first blood work we mentioned was September 2023. Uh, that slight deviation where the copper went up was in December of 2023, three months later. And now this blood work is, is just about a week ago, middle of February. So five, six months since we initially discovered the issue. Vitamin D dropped down to 17 on a scale of 30 to 100. Copper went down slightly to 115. So it went from like 120 to 139 to 115. And zinc was at 65, so around the same. Ferritin dropped down to nine because I donated blood recently. And my understanding of this is that I was severely, severely magnesium deficient which was not allowing my body to utilize vitamin D stores. 
So when I did take the magnesium, it caused a sudden drop as my body was actually activating the vitamin D and using it. Uh, although I want, I want to double check my vitamin D levels to confirm this was the case because uh, the, the blood circulation, regardless of whether you're getting one or the other vitamin D test, is not necessarily an indicator of liver stores. However, if you were like toxic in vitamin D from taking supplements, hypothetically, the blood levels usually don't go below 75%. So from everything I've seen in my understanding of blood work, if you're toxic in something, the levels will never be below like 75%. But we're gonna double check the vitamin D anyway. And a reason I'm so sure of that is because when I was tanning last summer, I would get extreme excruciating headaches towards the end of the summer. And magnesium actually made those go away instantly. But then I'd get insomnia because what was happening was, okay, you replenish the magnesium stores, but now you have a lot of circulating copper and ceruloplasm, so you're still not going to sleep. Uh, same thing with the blood copper. The blood copper is not an indicator of liver stores. However, what we just said, it's high because there is a probable toxicity, but we don't know how much is in the liver. And what we did kind of confirms this because when we take a lot of zinc, you know, we mobilize more copper in the body and the serum goes up. And same thing, if we took a lot of zinc plus magnesium, the copper and ceruloplasm would probably go up substantially. But the reason we don't want to do that in an experiment is because I will just feel terrible and not sleep. Um, but but it, it could probably be done. So instead of taking my typical supplement dosage, I could just go crazy for a day or two just to artificially inflate the blood levels to show you guys, hey, this is actually happening, this is working. So these are just indicators that my body is removing the copper. And once the copper levels are mostly removed from the liver, we should see it go down. So I could, I could be detoxing for months and months and months. And at the point where the copper toxicity really starts getting better, where most of the liver is depleted of copper, then we'll see the levels start to lower. Uh, so just because the blood levels don't necessarily change much doesn't mean that we're not doing the right thing. And the reason the zinc hasn't gone up is partially because I donated blood. Because when you donate blood, both the zinc and copper are removed. So hypothetically, you know, I donated blood two or three times. If the zinc levels are the same, that's excellent. That means if anything, my zinc would have gone up if, uh, if I didn't donate blood. But it's more important to, to keep the zinc low and remove copper with blood work than it is to just leave everything in, I think. Although I haven't felt much better when I donate blood, but hard to say. And some of you guys suggested zinc picolinate instead of amino acid chelations. And more than one of you, so I, I tried this. I took it for a month, only zinc picolinate. I mean, I didn't notice or feel a difference. And then because of that, I read about a dozen different studies on zinc chelations. And that plus my anecdotal experimenting, I'm not convinced the chelation of zinc is that relevant. You guys that are focused on that, it's very insignificant. In, in the picture of this copper toxicity thing. You know, on top of the anecdotal experiments not working, all of those studies basically said that amino acid chelations of zinc, such as zinc glycinate, uh, are more bioavailable and more utilized to the body. And that makes sense, especially considering um, the, the stuff we'll talk about ceruloplasm in a little bit. And I'll go more in depth on this in general in future videos, but to simplify it, Zinc helps prevent excess copper absorption. It's antagonistic to copper metabolically and overall helps reduce free copper in the bloodstream. Magnesium is required to bind the copper to ceruloplasm, allowing you to detox it. And you need large amounts of both magnesium and zinc orally at the same time to fix this. If you just take zinc on its own, didn't help. Molybdenum on its own, which we'll talk about now, didn't help. Magnesium on its own, didn't help. You need the combination of all three of these. So molybdenum is also antagonistic to copper and it even binds to copper in the intestine and brings copper to the kidneys to be excreted in the urine. 
So through my trial and error, I've noticed that I feel best when taking all three of these with every meal. A moderate amount of zinc, magnesium, and molybdenum with every single meal for the most part. Again, each of these individually might not help you much, but all together, it's very effective. And sometimes I would take zinc and molybdenum. Most of the time I'd add magnesium in there. The only time I would stop the magnesium is if I overdid it a little bit and had some sleeping issues. So uh, you gotta figure out the dosage where you feel good. Uh, because you don't want the ceruloplasm and the, and the copper in the bloodstream to go too high. Because although you might detox faster, you're not going to feel so good. You're not going to sleep. You're going to have insomnia. And the purpose of the magnesium is to just have enough ceruloplasm production in the liver. So it doesn't have to be taken with every single meal as your body can store the magnesium. The reason you need zinc and molybdenum with every single meal is because it's preventing the copper in the food from being absorbed. So every single meal is gonna have copper in it. Copper is in so many foods. And if you take zinc and molybdenum with the meal, that's going to prevent the copper absorption. So zinc and molybdenum, every single meal have a purpose. But magnesium, yes, your body needs magnesium in the liver to produce the ceruloplasmin to transport the copper, however, in regards from an every individual meal purpose, it's not necessarily going to chelate anything or help them, at least my understanding, but it's better anyway to have a consistently low dose of magnesium. The reason I'm bringing this up is that, hey, you don't necessarily have to take magnesium every meal is because you might overdo it. Uh, I mean, same with the other minerals. If you overdo zinc, you'll, you'll feel kind of crappy. If you overdo molybdenum, you'll feel kind of crappy. But the reason that even if you overdo it, you would still want to take it with the meals is because in, in the physical intestine, in the actual digestive tract, when you're eating the meals, it serves a function to prevent the copper from being reabsorbed. And uh, this is also the reason why I came up with the magnesium and zinc complexes on organ supplements. Uh, I wanted the most effective forms for this issue of copper toxicity, which I believe is very common. So the those forms of magnesium, I think it's uh, magnesium glycinate, magnesium taurate, and magnesium L3 and 8, those are the most bioavailable. And same with the zinc. The zinc is all amino acid forms. Off the top of my head, I think for the zinc we did uh, taurate, glycinate, and methionine. And those are also really relevant because ceruloplasmin, being an enzyme, is a protein made up of a lot of amino acids. So you would argue there that, you know, if you need high ceruloplasm production in the body, if anything, having these minerals in amino acid form is more relevant to that. Uh, and, and I don't think I, let me just say it again because I, and I should have explained it a little easier at the beginning of the video, uh, a little simpler. Ceruloplasm carries copper to the liver or it will be excreted in the bile to be detoxed. Ceruloplasm is also created in the liver and requires magnesium, zinc, and proteins to be created. So the, the real main thing here we're trying to do is to optimize ceruloplasm production and that's how we're going to basically detox copper as quickly as possible. So we're doing a few things overall. Optimizing ceruloplasm production, preventing absorption of copper from foods by taking certain minerals, and also we're using these minerals to replenish uh, depleted nutrient stores, especially zinc, especially magnesium. Uh, molybdenum, I doubt is, uh, I doubt I have a molybdenum deficiency. I don't think I do, but it serves a purpose every meal in, in helping detox copper. Uh, and people have issues with molybdenum toxicity too. However, because the dose we have on organ supplements is so low, I haven't noticed any issues with taking molybdenum every meal. Uh, my doses is on that, F 15 to 30 milligrams of zinc. I'll, sometimes I'll do 30 in the morning, but it's usually 15 most of the day. 50 to 100 milligrams of magnesium. Again, I'll do the higher dose, 100 milligrams of magnesium in the morning, and then 50 milligrams of the other meals in the day. And then I take one molybdenum capsule every meal, which is 100 micrograms. So if I go to 45 zinc, I notice I don't feel good per meal. Uh, if I go like to 150, 200 magnesium, 
I don't feel bad. I just don't sleep that well that night. Um, I actually feel better, if anything, sometimes. And molybdenum, I haven't messed around too much with going with higher doses. But um, b before I started uh, taking magnesium every single meal, or I guess just in general, uh, I, I noticed that taking the molybdenum is important. Because there was a period of time where I was just taking zinc with meals. And then when I added the, just the molybdenum in, I was uh, feeling and sleeping better. But hey, hopefully, hopefully a few more months. I mean, we don't really have many more questions to answer. We kind of have an idea of the protocol and we know what we're doing. Uh, I guess uh, as I feel better, as my body recovers, now that I'm able to sleep better for the most part, uh, the, the next six months is going to be a pretty big deal. We're going to see kind of how bad the copper toxicity is because if the blood levels are the same in three months, even six months, we're like, oh my God, how, how long is this going to take to fix? The vitamin D is definitely is definitely interesting. Um, you know, I, I could have been tanning all these years and who, who knows what my body was really doing with the vitamin D stores. I uh, could have just been burning them up uh, as fast as possible if I didn't, because I definitely didn't have enough magnesium uh, throughout this whole period of time. And, and I knew that. I knew I, I, knew I couldn't, uh, I knew I was really magnesium deficient for many years, but I couldn't take magnesium because I would I would get insomnia and the reason for that was because I had copper toxicity and I was also zinc deficient. So now that we've you know, pieced a few things together, uh, mainly thanks to um, a lot of you guys mentioning stuff in the comments as well as me experimenting a lot, we, we've kind of put the pieces together. We're just uh, finishing the puzzle right now. And uh, yeah, no, I mean, you guys made suggestions here and there, but it, it really took me you know, reading a lot of studies and experimenting on my own to figure out what I had to do because I'm, I'm really sensitive to things. So if something works for someone, they might not necessarily be a good indicator of that because if, if they've never had sleeping issues, if they've never had extreme circumstances, then uh, anything's going to work. If, if you don't feel too crappy, if your health isn't too ruined, like you're not you're not at this like I don't want to say life or death but you're not in this like extreme on and off night and day thing where as soon as you do something wrong it's super obvious in how you feel that it was wrong but anyway uh, thank you guys for joining me uh, we have all the supplements available on organsupplements.com and hopefully if my eyes if my eyes get a little better or I feel like if I feel up to it uh, I do want to do some whiteboard videos and uh, and do a little more of, of reading the studies and stuff explaining to you guys uh, the seroloplasma stuff in depth and I, ha I have all the studies compiled I think like uh, showing the zinc bioavailabilities showing the molybdenum function showing the seroloplasma and magnesium stuff I have all, all the studies maybe we'll if I feel up to it maybe we'll I don't know when my eyes get fixed maybe we'll do that but for now you guys have all the information you need in what to do to fix the cock toxicity. So I will see you guys in Colombia with 10 girls that are taller than me.